Hi, my name is Rob Whitehouse and I'm lucky enough to be the Samsung Digital Academy e-learning specialist uh, based at the Samsung Digital Academy for Teachers based at Harborne Academy. Uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview of the programs that we offer here and, and some of the resources and, and skills that we're teaching. So you're here at the moment, it's a, a three year project um, funded by uh, Samsung in partnership with Harborne Academy and Harborne's sp sponsors BMET. So how did this initially come to be? Well, Samsung have had a good relationship uh, with Birmingham Metropolitan College for a few years now and have uh, some experiences and, and, and um, service centres on site uh, to give students an opportunity to see some of the latest uh, equipment and technology available and they are already uh, been doing very well uh, and quite a few students have seen some of the latest uh, technologies on offer. Um, and then recently uh, BMET uh, became the sponsor for Harborne Hill and this was Harborne Hill as it was uh, going back um, more than a year now. And Harborne Hill was a struggling school, um, the classrooms weren't fit for purpose and thanks to a, a massive rebrand and relaunch, uh, thanks to the involvement of people like BMET and, and later on with, with partnership with Samsung, um, it was officially opened by the Duke of York on the 14th of March 2014. Uh, and here you'll see the Duke of York with, with the uh, the executive director, Chris Hilton. Um, it's a great opportunity to start again, as you can see, um, our students are very proud of the academy, and so they should be. Um, and a big part of the academy is where you're sitting today, which is the Samsung Digital Academy for Teachers. Uh, and that was also um, opened at a slightly later time, uh, officially, by the uh, MP Sajid Shavid, uh, the Minister for Media, Sport and Culture. Uh, and he came along to the centre and I gave him a little bit of a talk about what we do here. Uh, and then he gave officially um, opened by unveiling the plaque, which is now, instead of on the, on the stand as it is there, is just to the side of the window, it's now installed, um, which is a great opportunity and we got a press release done for that too hopefully gain some, some more interest uh, for the programs and training that we provide. Um, it's a three year project as I've said and the main aim is to support teachers across Birmingham and possibly wider um, to improve their digital skills and to support the teaching of the new computing curriculum which is causing some problems as you can imagine uh, especially with primary school teachers who haven't got any experience at all in programming and coding uh, these are all completely new skills for them to learn and um, so I'm thankfully uh, able to work with them and I have a certain number of targets that I'm working towards um, the targets are uh, which we might uh, do far more than these numbers but this is what we're, the t what we're aiming for at the moment so at the end of the three years we're hoping to be engaged with 19 primary schools uh, and we'll have trained something like 240 teachers uh, eight secondary schools which should hopefully be at least 40 teachers uh, four teacher training programs uh, which should cover maybe about 160 trainees uh, we're obviously with staff here at Harborn Academy already working very closely with the Harborn staff and, and I expect that to continue as I'm based here it's only only natural to work closely with them uh, and also at our sponsors at BMET um, aiming for about 90 teachers although we're looking to develop something a little bit wider that may be and, and um, perhaps cascade knowledge a little bit wider because yeah, there's obviously a lot lot more than 90 teachers at, at Birmingham Metropolitan College uh, one of the programs that we teach um, is called um, Teaching in a Digital World and, and this is just a very basic starter course really for teachers to start thinking about what what the new the new dawn of technology gives us in, in the classroom, what, what can we do, what can we bring to it and, and why do we need to have that different world? Well, um, if we consider the, the, the the people that we have on, on in the world at the moment. We have our digital natives and, and our digital immigrants. Um, and you could sort of argue that anyone maybe over about the age of 35-ish is a digital immigrant. And it doesn't matter if you've become very conversant with technology now. It's been harder for you to learn it than, say, today's five-year-olds or even three-year-olds who can pick up a phone and a tablet and quite happily negotiate any number of apps and uh, settings and controls. It's perfectly natural for children today to use the digital world to communicate, be part of virtual communities, playing games, watching media, listening to music, whatever they need to find out. The internet and the devices that are nearest to them are what they reach for first. 
And then the other end of the scale, we've got the teachers who are teaching these incredibly gifted young people. Um, and of course, understandably, we have a bit of a, a skills gap uh, between the teacher and the student. Some teachers are, are very much skilled up, but a large portion have missed out on all that um, that learning because they never had it when they were younger and, and in some cases still don't today. They don't have smartphones, they don't have tablets, um, don't even to some extent possibly even check their emails, which seems strange to, to some, but it is actually you know not, not uncommon for people working in a professional environment to be reluctant to engage with modern technology. And so you know, if we're really going to uh, improve the future of our young people, uh, teachers need to be skilled up um, and not only just for their own improvement but because institutions are buying tablets and devices to make classrooms more interactive and collaborative well if obviously if teachers aren't skilled up for that you're not actually going to be making the best use of those tablets of those laptops of those interactive screens so that's a, a big part of the programming and so what do uh, we, we look at in that program. Well things like uh, apps and web tools so for example like this one here which is called Lino which can open up a discussion board, a, a virtual stickies board and anyone can just post a sticky and it just goes up there and the whole class could see it. Uh, it could be anonymous, you don't have to put names against it um, and as it says on there it's instant, it gives visual feedback, uh, it gives everybody a voice, everyone can have a say without that fear of putting your hand up and actually having to speak above everyone else and as you can see here it's being used uh, on a browser but it's being used on a tablet uh, but you could have easily used that on a PC or a laptop uh, or just on one computer attached to a big screen if you wanted to. Uh, another useful tool is an online assessment tool called Socrative. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. A teacher can set up a quiz but then all the student needs to do to access that quiz is just type in the room number on the student app or the student web page and it takes you instantly into the quiz and it asks, you, asks for your name and then you do your questions and at the end of it the teacher gets a very detailed report back on, on how people did in the classroom and it isn't just as simple as saying so and so got 88 percent. What's useful about it is you can see uh, the class totals for questions so if everybody got one question wrong you'd know you'd have to go back and cover that item again um, and if everyone got all the questions right you might say well okay possibly it's not it's not challenging them enough so you can start to dig down into what you need to do to make your lessons uh, more successful and so forth uh, online flashcards through something like Study Blue, also very popular. Uh, this one's an example of uh, spotting the um, identifying the names of the bones in the head. Uh, you would flip the card, and the name of the bone would be on the other side. And if you got it right, you'd tick the green up, and if you got it wrong, you'd tick the the red thumbs down. And then you can do a proper test later where you don't mark it yourself. You just literally have to type in the a answer. And as a teacher, the teacher can view the the progress of the students, which is very useful as well. Uh, so it's very quick and easy tool, saves a lot of marking, uh, but it's fun and they can go away and practice on their smartphones. Um, you can also do creative projects and this is a, uh, an Android app called um, KineMaster Pro uh, where you can very easily just take a few videos, uh, trim them, add some narrative, add some effects, add some music uh, and then just publish it at the end of it quick and easy. Um, you could do a film trailer for example in e easily in one lesson rather than having to hop between uh, you, you know your digital cameras and your, your Macs or whatever it is you're using to, to digitize. Um, quick and easy, all on a tablet, job done. You can also create interactive books. Uh, this one's got a video, you can add audio, images and text. Um, nice revision activity or, or maybe a teacher might want to produce a book for the students, their own bespoke revision book. Quick and easy to do. That was with Creative Book Builder. Um, and then another thing might be an online field trip. Uh, here we have a view inside the Colosseum, uh, a view that not really many people I suppose uh, across the world could would ever get to see in their lives, but through Google Earth you can actually tour and have a look inside which is just fantastic. You can see Grand Canyon, Taj Mahal or closer to home Stonehenge, uh, even Ironbridge uh, not far from here. So lots of opportunities to get out there and see the world even if you can't physically go. And then we also support the computing curriculum, teaching computing at key stage 2 and 3. Um, so why do we need to do that? Well there's a new curriculum started in September 2014. Britain's one of the first countries in the world to actually make that change on a national level to change the curriculum. Um, 
and so hopefully it will reinvigorate the employment landscape of the future for Britain uh, and that's what certainly would, we'll be hoping and the curriculum is not about learning to use computers so we're not learning how to use PowerPoint uh, and Word documents we're going beyond that we're looking at how they work uh, and the feeling is that it's, it's, it's kind of wrong to be teaching about how one program works because that's always going to change and, and the only way we can really prepare our young people for the future is to teach them about what's going on behind those programs. So the kind of things we'll be looking at there are unplugged activities like flowcharts. This is an example of a playground game and the idea is that they have to find the bug in the program but that you're still um, learning about flowcharts but you're kind of out there and playing games at the same time. A um, little application here called Lightbot, where you have to get the bot to the blue square and, and you have to achieve your objective. So it's very much like, like Logo from years gone by or, or like the little Bebot robots that they use in primary schools. But here it's just all available in an app. Scratch is a visual programming language. You'll notice the, the colour, colourful blocks which replace the code and you can drag and drop them uh, and make really quite creative inventive programs. You can kind of really cover the whole of the curriculum using a program like Scratch. It's very, very flexible. And Makey Makey um, is um, a little circuit board which, uh, kit which can fulfill the physical control elements so you can clip up with crocodile clips to modeling clay or bananas and that clay and bananas become your keys they become your your joystick controllers or whatever so you can control games you can make uh, the keys operate on a piano all sorts of things uh, Bitsbox is a nice simple application for just doing very simple little apps you can change the pictures the colors you can touch things on the screen and they can blow up or, or shoot off into the air um, Great fun, nice simple application and just works in, in the browser. Or a little bit more advanced than that um, is something like AppShed, which although you don't sort of code and program it, it's more drag drop, but the apps you can build at the end of it are far, far more uh, detailed and you can have tabs and maps and icons and all sorts of things. Um, all free applications which are easy to use. Um, at Key Stage 3 you would move into more th three dimensional uh, programs like Kodu. That's the screen of uh, the 3D virtual environment in Kodu, similar to Scratch, just a bit more 3D. Um, Raspberry Pi uh, is an exciting um, a new thing in this area uh, in which you can really start to think about how computers work. Just, just the very first lesson of hooking up a Raspberry Pi and getting it working uh, teaches you so much about what's inside a computer. Uh, things that have been kind of forgotten, uh, I think, over the past sort of few generations. Um, you'd have to go back quite a while to when programming was started. And then in terms of true textual programming, things like Python um, are probably the, the, the top programs. Uh, JavaScript is useful because it's sort of the language of web pages and you're integrating HTML and CSS. Um, a very useful program to learn. Um, Alongside of our teaching programs, we're also encouraging classes of school children to come in and have uh, a workshop. Um, here was me doing a scratch workshop where I use a template of a game and I get them to sort of uh, identify the bugs and fix them and eventually you can play the game and have fun. I mean kids love doing this sort of things um, but of course they're still learning and meeting the curriculum targets at the same time. And we're having our training is in full swing. We've got sometimes one-to-ones with like ICT coordinators and single teachers to uh, at the bottom here we've got some Harborn Academy staff having the key stage three uh, training and then at the top right uh, there was a little short session that I went out to, to as a follow-up uh, with our local primary school which is very successful as well. So what's our overall aims at the end of the programme? Well, we're hoping to encourage the innovative lessons of the future, not just at Harborn but at BMET and at primary schools and secondary schools. We're hoping to close that digital literacy gap, not just between teacher and student, but between uh, underprivileged sort of children that haven't got access to technology all the time. We want the connected classrooms of the future where they collaborate online and in the cloud so that the classroom isn't just within school, it's at home as well when they go away. We want the creators and the app developers of the future and we want to make them more employable. Those overall are the aims and hopefully this project will be a big part of that. Well thank you for listening, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, any questions uh, you can pop into the Academy or get in touch with us uh, through uh, the website or under email. Thank you.